he is an incredible story of coming from a small town in Texas to becoming the most, single most important economic research analyst in the history of Wall Street. The guy is an absolute legend. And he came from the University of Texas. Ed was born in uh, Brady when Ed was in fifth grade. They moved to Angelo. And then we wound up at the same junior high school in the seventh grade and have been best friends ever since. So we did three years in junior high school and three years in high school and then four years at UT. Ed and I were both too small for contact sports, so I played golf and he took care of our Bobcat mascot. It doesn't matter where you come from, it just matters what you do. His personality exploded when he came to Texas. He knew that his life had changed. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And my favorite quote is from Ed. He goes, when I graduated from there, I felt like I could do anything. I feel the same way, and I hope that all of our stu students also feel the same way after four years. He was selected as one of the 20 outstanding students in 1967. Just an incredible honor. He got accepted to MIT and finished his UT and gets in his car and drives to Boston, and I think he knew he wanted to be on Wall Street. When I first met him, he came to C.J. Lawrence in 1972, and he came in to be interviewed. Um, and I was searching for somebody to cover the economic front for us on the research side. And he was thinking Wall Street was something he wanted to try. And um, he had so much energy. It was really so pleasant that I thought, oh, this is perfect for us. To have a guy with, you know, those kind of qualities uh, would mean a lot to our firm and to the other people in the organization. And lo and behold, I was actually right. Ed's career was remarkable for two separate and distinct reasons. First, as a manager and an entrepreneur, he founded ISI, which is the best independent research platform. And uh, we actually became ranked number one in institutional investor this year for the first time after being number two for four years. It's an incredible run for, uh, for someone of our scale. The second reason is that I say regular, which is sort of a joke here, because Ed's run of being number one for 42 years is remarkable because the average person, the average analyst that's number one is at number one for two or three or four or five or 10 or another legend might be 20. Ed being at 40 is just the Cal Ripken unbreakable string that, that uh, no one can touch. And uh, we're really lucky to have him at Evercore. You know, people who were doing economic research at that time, mostly were writing five and 10, 20 page reports with a lot of statistics and, and so forth. What Ed did was he brought economic research alive. What really makes Ed remarkable as an economist is he takes a, a series of complicated surveys, uh, uh, analysis, and other thoughts and sentiments from around the world and distills it down to five or 10 bullet points. So anyone on Wall Street can pick it up and understand where we sit today Ed's a really well-known personality on Wall Street uh, because in addition to his very famous two-minute video with bullet points every morning that everyone I know relies upon, he's also on all the important TV shows like CNBC, uh, Bloomberg, Fox Business, uh, and, and all Squawk Box and the others. You know, everybody feels smarter after three or four minutes with Ed. He's a regular guy uh, in addition to being a giant on Wall Street. Ed's the warmest guy. He's a family man. Family is, is most important. His wife, Caroline, they met and had kind of a long distance romance for five years. They have three kids and uh, they've got two grandkids. He just loves his kids and he and Caroline have a great relationship. The Navy SEAL Foundation has been very important for him. His most recent project has been to fund maybe half of the expense of rebuilding the Mason County Courthouse because it was torched by a disgruntled county employee five years ago. And this 150-year-old magnificent stone structure burned and crumbled, and it's being rebuilt. He's just that kind of guy. He just 
he just wants to help. First thing he told me about his UT memories were the tower and, and how much the tower meant to him and, and how much the phrase, ye shall seek the truth and the truth shall set you free. It's one of the, his favorite phrases that he uses all the time. I just want to wrap my arms around him. I have to bend down, but... <laughs>